Chasing the Racing. Powered by Colchester Kawasaki, part of the Global Moto Group. We supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles. Three, two, one and welcome back to Chasing the Racing. Our co-host for the evening is the, do I dare say, delicious Josh Corner. How are we doing, son? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. You're looking very factory there. Very, very factory. Well, we are at Silverstone. It is the first round. Big fan. I like you, who gets to play with motorbikes all day, I have to fix them. <laughs> there we so. go. Well, the only person who's more factory than you right now is team owner Faye Ho. How are we doing? And thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, no. Thank you for having me. Oh, yes. there we go. Who's yeah. got a ring doorbell? Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> so, security is paramount. Absolutely it is. love it. There you are. This... Turn it off, otherwise, oh, um... oh, no, I'm all about the gossip here. What have you oh, been ordering? Yeah. Is that Amazon? Is that uh, takeaway? Probably, probably my son actually turning up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. I'll tell you what, we'll just jump straight into it then. So, how's yes. Silverstone going? So, we're, we're here at Silverstone, and obviously, your riders have been out there dishing out the portions. How are you getting on? Yeah, I think. Um... Both of them are doing not badly, actually. So, um, obviously, we're having a new bike again this year. So, you know, there's lots of things they need to get used to and kind of work it. And testing we did in Silverstone, like last week, it was raining. So we kind of got the, the rain setting actually set up. And now it's like dry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so now we've got to go to the dry setting. So it's like all over again. But I think they're getting on all right. So... I think Josh is fourth on the um, last one, on the second one, so it's good. No, very good. I t- like, um, yeah. So how close do you keep your ear to the ground then? So, you know, when they're coming in, new bike, is, uh, are they happy with the new bike? Are they not? Are they? Um, yeah. Uh, they. I mean, I briefly spoke to, like, Josh about it. I think he said um, it is, um, uh, it's better. Yeah. Um, but obviously, you know, there's still issues, you know, engine braking and that sort of thing. But, you know, I think the boys will get around on that issue but yeah. um it's good we're out and today the weather's fantastic it's not raining <laughs> thank god um so yeah at least they're getting track time so that's all it matters really that is the important thing but yeah. I, t- I tell you what well anyway um, i was end up going to go down a uh, hickman josh how many riders do you look after actually like that's a very good that's my uh, first big question there's so superbike i yep. got josh brooks and yep. peter hickman on there mm-hmm then uh, on the F900 BMW, yep. I've got Richard Cooper. Richard Cooper. And, and Katie. Walker. Kate, Kate Walker. And then the girls um, in the 600 class, I've got um, Scarlett, uh, Jamie, um, Denise, and Holly in that class. Your so, Christmas card list must be an absolute nightmare, <laughs> know, right? to be fair. Like, you know. <laughs> I do. By the end of the season, I tend to get them little presents. So I'm like, have to make sure I got enough for all of them. But um, <laughs> now, to be fair, like Christmas shopping for a bike race must be a piece of piss. Let's be honest. You know what I mean? There's some tires. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's oh, the best so, way around it. Don't even go with tires. I mean, Jesus. When I started this thing in 2020, I remember when Darren sent me the tire bill. I was like, what? I said, the amount of pair of shoes I can get with that. But it was like, <laughs> oh my God. I was like, really? God, Is this going to be like yeah. that much? And then when you look in the truck yeah. and you go, well, where are they? Oh, yeah, they're yeah. in that bin over yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. What? How much was that tyre bill then? You know, so first... that was only for testing. Um, so it was like, <laughs> exactly. The testing model that was, was the worse. first test we did in Portimao. And uh, because the team wasn't really set up yet. So mm. we have to kind of like, test yeah. the bikes that I got from Smith's Racing um, but the tyre bill was like 8 grand I was like oh okay is this gonna be like that all the time <laughs> <laughs> it gets much but, worse <laughs> yeah but, I'll tell you your accountant must sweat at the end of the year <laughs> don't show the bill whatever yeah. you do don't show the bill yeah. I, I tell you like, all, all seriousness being a t- we, we don't actually get a lot of team owners in the pod you know it, it's actually Great to have you on board because yeah, how much is your tyre bill over the year for two oh. riders? Go on. Um, well, well last year, last year I had two superbike and two super stock. Yeah. Yeah. So and that, I, that was Olsen and uh, Jack, Nixon. Jack Nixon. Yeah. yeah. So that was like over a hundred grand for this season. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> crazy i mean a lot of trees like, you'd have to chop down that, there, that, that's a lot of trees for me but yeah like um at, so 2020 is started but uh, let's even go further and further and further back from there like yeah. what got you into loving motorcycles so so what i actually um not long ago found out that my dad was actually a fan of motorbikes he had a ducati and 
I mean, I think everyone knows my parents passed away in a car accident when I was six years old. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, pa- pardon my English. Like, honestly, uh, like, that's, what I was ex- that's what's great about this pod is uh, <laughs> Grace will not agree with me on this. Is I, I don't do any homework and it must get on her nerves. But it's like... I first met you when I was at, you won't remember me, I hope you don't remember me anyway. I was at the Macau Grand Prix, I was having a bottle of Grey Goose, like you kindly bought for all the riders. Wow. I was dribbling drunk and I was like, thank you for inviting me and you must have just gone, oh, another one. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, that must have been 2010 or 11? No, no, a lot later that I'm over the moon that you don't remember me, that is great oh, news. Oh, right, I, so 18 then, 2018, 19. It would have been 18. Yeah, because yeah. that's when I lost my finger. Then I did my... Oh, f- right. That's a different yeah. story. It's a different story. Well, anyway, so, yeah. So, going back to that. So, um, I had a very vague memory when I was, like, really little that I got put on the back of a motorbike. So, I recently found out that was my dad. So, I think from a very young age, I kind of had that fascination with motorbikes. And then, obviously, when in my 20s, my first boyfriend I was with, he had an Africa twin. So we used to go riding all the time. So I was always riding um, every now and then. We'd go and get a Ducati or something. And um, so it was like, it was, I kind of enjoy being on, as a passenger, yeah. I enjoy that sort of riding. Um, so I think, and then... Back in Macau, when I was living there in 2006, when I was introduced into the bikes. So hmm. the year before, I was with like a car racing team. Yeah, I was kind of with the Grand Prix, Macau Grand Prix. Oh, so right, I was yeah, following yeah. them around because I loved the racing. And then I thought, hmm, okay. And then in the following year, I got introduced to all the bikers. I thought, right, there you go. I like this better. This is more fun. <laughs> this is my crowd. This is my crowd, exactly. So so from then, I kind of just started sponsoring the odd team. I sponsored uh, Paul's team one year. I think it was 2010 with Stuart Easton riding. And they they, they yeah. won the Grand, Macau Grand Prix that year. Won it. Um, they smoked it that yeah, year. Yeah, <laughs> I think they did. Yeah, so... <laughs> So that's how it kind of progressed, really. And then um, I kind of moved here back to the UK because of my kids' education and then kind of stepped away from racing for a bit and then kind of came back in in 2018. Right. Yeah. So I'll tell you what, so were you uh, like... Like, what was it like growing up in Macau? You know, I've been there and it's just, it is just a total different part of the world. It's great. It's And being, it's... It's casino, isn't it? The whole yes. place, to me, if I was going to describe it to people, don't hate me for saying this, but no. it is just one massive casino. Yeah. And I'm just like, what, what was it like growing up in Macau? Well, I'm sure everyone's kind of got a perception of me um, being in a very, very prestigious family, which my grandfather was the casino king in Macau. But my upbringing was very sheltered because of what he does we were never really allowed out the house i wasn't allowed like play dates or anything like that so my sister and i when we were like um growing up um uh so after my parents passed away we went to macau and lived with my grandparents um so we weren't allowed out so you gotta laugh at this so if we're on holiday or anything like that from school holidays we have um, the grandfather's house. They had a pool um, uh, where the house is. And then there's like a bit of like um, landing thing. Um, and then there's a road that you can basically, it's like a main road that goes down into town, into yeah. the old Macau town. Oh, hi. So my sister and I used to be so bored because we weren't allowed friends. We'll get our little table out with a little chair and we'll sit there and basically write down every single car registration that goes past that that. road. I mean, we used to have papers of it. (laughs) I bet you, are you the same with lap times now? Josh, (laughs) you know, a couple of years ago, mate, you were, you you know, you were two, you know, point two off it last time. But pardon my ignorance on this, but was it like you couldn't, you couldn't go out or, and you couldn't have friends? Was this because like, kidnapping risk or what was what was a, all that about? a bit like that yeah yeah right. obviously because like of for our safety and and obviously my grandfather was working all the time mm. he wasn't really in macau in the house a lot um so i was really kind of brought up by servants really right um but um 
then I kind of came here for school when I was uh, 14 years old. Um, and it was a game, it was an eye opener because I had so many years of people looking after me. Then yeah. I went to boarding school and I had to look after myself yeah. and I just been thrown in the deep end, but it made me a better person. Yeah. yeah what, so. what, 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 Macau to England, whereabouts in England? I was in Surrey. Sorry. <laughs> so so it, who, who made the decision? Did someone have like a globe and just spin it and go, <laughs> bollocks, we'll just put you in Surrey? Who, what, how did that No, uh, I think my grandfather had friends that was actually, um, you know, here um, and then kind of got the recommendation. I mean, my grandfather used to come over to the UK a lot. Right. Um, so he was good friends with Prince Philip. Just, just <laughs> drop a name in there. There he goes. Um, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Uh, Philip, hold, Charles, I'm thinking he was no, now Prince, the king. Sorry, I'm getting yeah, mixed Prince up here. Philip, then. Yeah, um, he also got the OBE from the Queen of all the charity works that he's done. Um, right. So he used to come, and also I remember on my 18th birthday he came over to have a meeting with I think John Major at the time, the Prime Minister. Yeah. Yeah. Been, so yeah, yeah, was, yeah. He came over for that. So. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine being like being in that situation. Oh, I've got to go hang around with the royals. Uh-huh. Bloody Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not saying like yeah, I didn't it's, I it's didn't fun. know any of this at all. So I oh, just was really like I don't I've never been to Macau either, so I've got nothing bad on that. Oh you'd get lost in Macau, it's such a giggle. <laughs> it is such a it is such a giggle. It's just you can spot a bike racer from a mile away though, can't you? We're just like a, a dodgy herd of cattle just going through <laughs> the, the thought, I thought of going anywhere abroad with you, Dom. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. yeah, no, it's uh, it would be it would, uh, no, it's it's no, it's not good. It's not good. Son, it's but... changed a lot now. Yeah, so I, t- I tell you what. Speaking of name dropping, um, beforehand, like uh, me and Chrissy always came to a rule on the pod, so it was like, um, don't have the crack before the crack. And you were briefly discussing, and then a, a fantastic name appeared of yes. uh, Bruce Lee. Yes. And I was so tempted to start this by saying <laughs> Bruce Lee, but explain the connection there. That is amazing. So I actually found this out maybe. Ooh, 10 years ago that uh, my grandfather's side were actually related to Bruce Lee. So I think it's either a second or third cousin sort of relation. Yeah. Um, I know his nephew very well, Clarence. Um, so I've seen, uh, I meet up with him when I ever go back to Hong Kong and Macau. So yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's a bit of a, you know, I thought, wow, I can't believe that we're related. <laughs> Next time you're in a bar, I was going to say, do not come near me. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've got yeah. connections. I've got connections. So I t- let's go back to yeah, um, I know it's a bike podcast, but I want to go back to the school element. Yeah. So you've gone from hot like Macau, Surrey at thirteen. You know, like yeah. what? Like, did you want to go home? Was it change? Where you thought I want to stay here forever? What? What? You know. Well, it- so I mean, my so my dad's sides from Hong Kong. Um, mm which is the Asian side of me. Mm. But then my mum's British. I mean, my mother was born in England. She's full English. Um, and she was actually a 60s model in the 1960s. And she was uh, in the first Casino Royale as one of the Bond girls. Shut up, man. Yeah. We've got Bruce Lee, James Bond. A Bond girl. Prince Philip. <laughs> <laughs> have you got a book out? No. There's definitely a book in there somewhere. I'll t- tell you what, I, we're going to have to tell it. Who, who, is that, who is that lovely woman that came with you? That was Bex. Right. Lock the door, Grace. She's not coming here. We, we have not got enough time here to get through it. Right. So how did, sorry, how did your parents meet then? So they met in England, apparently. So my dad actually came to school here in the UK. He was in Millfield. Right. Hi. Yeah, in Somerset. So he went to school in Millfield, and I believe that's how they met in the UK. Um, but um, yeah, so it kind of, I mean, those days, um, I mean, my grandfather was a very traditional man, and he kind of wasn't too happy that my dad was marrying my mum because she was English. Right. So, um, uh, but I think. When we, myself and my sister were born, it kind of changed everything. And, um, you know, I, it, it was, we were kind of, they were accepting it in a way. But yeah. my mum sometimes still feels she was kind of like isolated in a way. Because right. she doesn't speak Cantonese. So when I was born and my sister was born, um, they were very determined to get a nanny that speak Cantonese. So that I was brought up speaking Cantonese. Yeah. So I speak two languages. 
we can barely speak English right from the north. <laughs> to be fair, speak for yourself. That's, <laughs> it's fair, you <laughs> probably know multiple languages here, but that, that. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that, and then obviously, um, um, if you look into my mum a bit more, she dated Brian Jones from the Rolling Stones. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! There's definitely a book here. There's a hundred percent a book. There's a big mean, one. My mum, my well, my auntie tells me stories that like Mick Jagger and the whole crew used to hang around in their kitchen. You know, at that time. I think so. that's cooler than all the bike racing stuff. We just, we just not talk about bike racing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have. I think I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in this. To be fair, that. Holy crap. Yeah. But... Think, like, what's what's the age gap? Is it just you and your sister or have you got other siblings as well? No, it's just me and my sister. It's three years um, age gap between us. So I'm older than her. Right. Um, she's a jewellery designer. So she does jewellery. Um, right. And um, she goes all like to the Middle East places to kind of do um, her jewellery tray show and all that sort of thing. So Okay, you see her cool. logo on my bike because um, I always put it on. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't even want to know what it. I feel it's like guest. Guest. Well, the, guest. The it's very easy. Yeah. Sarah Ho jewelry. Oh, Sarah Ho oh there, go, there goes the game. There goes the game. Grace is gonna have to put it like. Well, have to, God love you. I'll have to put something up there for that. But who's the most famous person? We're we're totally going off timeline. Sorry, but who is the most famous person you know? Like with that, all that name, like all those names that the family. I mean, the, who? The, I mean, those are like quite. I mean, obviously, I met Prince Philip yeah. when I was like quite when I was still at school. So I'm talking maybe like seventeen, eighteen years old. Yeah. Um. I mean, <laughs> famous people like now. Yeah. Um. Oh, I've met quite a few. Like, um, when I lived in Macau, obviously my friends were like got an entertainment company, so we kind of brought in all these rappers or stars. So, I mean, I've met quite a few, like Nelly, Lil John. I met Mariah. Um, Are they all performed uh, at your nightclub uh, as well? Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> I walk, like, out, like, you know, the spot the Grey Goose I was discussing about, right? And then I was half... Like, not halfway through it. I was spilling most of it. Sorry about your flaws. But, and I remember looking up going, that's Lil Wayne. <laughs> that's Lil John, Lil John. John. Lil yeah, John, yeah, <laughs> What the hell's in this pot? Like, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. Like, is sorry, but like, um, did your sister come over to boarding school? Like, because you were three years older, so yeah. were you out there by yourself then? No, no, she came with me. So I came I... when I was fourteen. She came when she was about eleven. Right. But, yeah. So we were in the same school. Um. So I basically look after her, but. Um, if you read a lot of my interviews before, um, like because I was looked after so by servants back home, hmm. um, when I went to boarding school um, the first day, I still remember this, and I met three very nice girls. I'm still friends with them from school, and it was dinner time, and I went to get my dinner. So and then after dinner, I got dessert, and everyone got like a piece of fruit, and I got an orange, and I sat there, looked at it, and the girls goes. Are you not eating, Faye? I'm like, um, I don't know how to peel it. And they all looked at me going, well, you don't know how to peel an orange. I'm like, uh, no. They go, well, who peels it for you? I'm like, the servants. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like a wake up call. Oh my God. They looked at me like, are you for real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did, it, did it feel a little bit like freedom when you sort of went to, I understand you probably wouldn't describe boarding school as freedom, but. I would imagine it probably changed it a lot of things for you. It has. It changed a lot. I mean, don't get me wrong. It changed it for better. Yeah. But then it changed it for worse too because it was like a bird let out of a cage. Yeah. I just went and did everything <laughs> I can. I just went bananas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I can go out here. Um, so, um, yeah, it was it was good and bad, let's say. <laughs> what, what, what's your wildest story then? Leading up to 20, we're keeping this at a timeline now. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> born school to 14, up to 20, Feho in England. Up, What's the wildest story you could well, put up out to here? 20 years old? Yeah, and then the race team got, no, no, you got on the bikes at 20, didn't you? That's right. No, well, at the time, I, yeah, I had a boyfriend that was riding. So that was it. Yeah. So your wildest story between there and 20. I'm talking 18, okay. you're discovering it. Your wildest <laughs> story, I want it. The, so at the time, um, we were living in London, so mm. um, 
my ex at the time, he had an Africa twin. But then one weekend we thought, well, wow, let's go and, you know, we'll go and get a Takati or something just to, because he's from Wales. So, <laughs> so it was 20. I'm not going to judge you too much, don't worry about <laughs> so, so at 20 years old, obviously, you're still kind of in that party phase. Yeah. <laughs> so we went out one weekend, one night. I can't remember what night. It was Friday or Saturday or something. And it was like a full night partying. Then the next day ago, was supposed to ride to see his parents in Wales. And I was on the back of the bike. I can tell you, I don't remember half of the trip. <laughs> <laughs> just duct tape round. Yes, <laughs> probably. I basically just held on. That was it. That's the way to do it. That is 100% the way to do I it. I think that was the wildest thing, one of the wildest, you can say. So, so when did you... Um... Sorry, but we'll get on the bikes at some point. No, no, we're just not. Just thinking about you sort of saying you had like relatively sheltered upbringing and appreciate why that could be difficult and yeah. a bit different. Um, when do you when do you sort of think that you uh, figured out what you wanted to do? Like, so you got you had mm. you got a nightclub and stuff. When did you sort of think, oh, I'm going to do that? I'm going to go and do the entertainment thing. Or so. Oh, um, for a while, I didn't actually know what I wanted to do. Um, Because not having my parents around, and obviously my grandfather, he's such a, like, um, professional and, you know, he's got that kind of demeanor to him. Mm. I mean, I used to be scared of him. Um, But I can see that, you know, with what he's achieved, it kind of, kind of give me a bit of drive of what I want to do. Mm. Um, But... I mean, I've tried different things. Uh, When I was back in Macau, I had a pet shop. I had a veterinarian clinic, yeah. Um, Because I'm really into animals. Um, I really like helping animals. I think, you know, um, that was something lacking in Macau at the time. Um, So I really pushed for that. Um, And the organization is still there, still going. So yeah, it's good to see. Um, and then I kind of, well, I kind of try and narrow to see what I want to do. But then the bikes was always kind of in my life. Um, mm. Every now and then it will pop up. So when the opportunity came, I thought, you know what? Perfect. Because 2018 and 19, I was with the um, uh, stock team with Michael Rutter. Yes, of course, yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm trying to go through the timeline myself here. Yeah. I'm trying to put the years together so, through BSV here. Yeah. yeah, so I always said, you know what? Why do we do Superbike? No. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but I want to see my name on it, you know? No. So I'm like, okay. So when 2020, the opportunity came, I'm like, yes, I'm going to do it. <laughs> And that and that was straight in the that was Smith's racing at that yeah, point. Yeah, so, it was Smith's racing. Yeah. Um, were you you already were you sponsoring Peter at this point? Or I was. So um, obviously, eighteen nineteen, Peter rode for me in Macau. Yeah, and um, that was, oh, the, this is the, my the, sort of memory of my earliest sort of memory of you guys yeah. and being in the paddock and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So it, I I met Alan and Rebecca. They came to Macau in two thousand eighteen, and that's kind of how I started to know them a bit more. Mm. And then. 2020, I came back in the paddock. I kind of helped sponsor Smith Racing in a small way. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how it kind of progressed, really. I th- I like it. <laughs> how every good every good idea always starts in the pub. That's that's the fact of life. You know, <laughs> it did. Just... <laughs> it started outside the garage. Yeah. That's how it started. <laughs> On the way to the pub. <laughs> I, just, I just really want to paint a picture. You know, it's a bit like if you've got. You know, you've got the budget and you've got the ambition to go for it. How did you even start the conversation? Fancy selling up? Was it like? Was oh it, no, like, it wasn't like that. So obviously <laughs> that year, twenty twenty, um, Smiths came in with a non-branded truck, mm. and I was hanging around with them in the garage. And Darren said to me, "I said, why don't you have any graphics on the truck?" He goes, "You can put your name on there." I'm like. What do you mean you can, I can put my name on it? goes, well, you can put your name on there. And I'm not quite, I don't know if you remember that year, I also helped Brian McCormack. Yeah. Yes, I. So I had a little logo saying Epic Show Racing, but it wasn't kind of, it was just something mocked up quickly. Yeah. And um, so Darren said, well, you can put your name on there. I'm like, really? But I thought he was joking. I thought, nah, you know what? 
no, I can't, no, well, of course not. I can't see them packing up, you know. So it just didn't register at yeah. the time. But then through the season, more and more start, the conversations start coming along. Mm. And then obviously I spoke to Rebecca too. And then they go, yeah, well, we want someone to kind of take over where they can actually carry on the team yeah. and yeah. progress with it into like more success. And that's why... It kind of took over it. <laughs> I tell you, we, won't, we won't go into full details with it, but coming from following the, the car racing, I know I thought, you know, I enjoy the bikes. These are my, like, you know, this is my crowd. I want to get involved. And you're sponsoring Hickman. You're in there with Brian. And then to put your name on the side of a race wagon. Yeah. To be blunt, was it cheaper than you thought or more expensive? Not like, <laughs> no, it's interesting. Like, you know. <laughs> well... I've been this. sponsoring teams, I mean, so through, on. yeah, 2006 on until 18 and 19. I mean, never a title sponsor, hmm. maybe a secondary sponsor. But Jesus Christ, I can tell you, it's like um, a yeah. way lot more than what I kind of expected. Yeah. But, um, but when I actually agreed on um, setting up my own team, because I'm a female in a way, I knew I had to come in with a bit of a present yeah. in 2021 um, because I don't want people to think that, oh, she's just coming in. She's just doing it for fun. Yeah. And I'm like, well, no, I'm not here doing it for fun. I'm here to win. So I made sure that everything was branded properly. Yeah. The logo was done differently. Um, we picked the colors, something that no one's really yeah, have the in, the, green, uh, yeah. in the paddock. So we thought we'll go with that. And... Daz has done a great job doing all the design work and everything. And, um, you know, it's just something that I want to come in and basically went here, I'm here, you know, that sort of present. And I think I accomplished it. Um, Without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> How much in terms of, um, so this side of racing, like really, it really, really interests me. So like you say there, you came in 2021 uh, with the intent for it to be like a real thing, not like you say it, you didn't want it to people to think I'm just doing this for fun. I'm just chucking a couple of bikes out there, sort of thing. I think that was pretty evident from the start. It looked like a real business, and it was, yeah, it, was yeah. it was proper. Yeah, and that's obviously grown. You've stuck on more riders and stuff over the last couple of years. How? And I've seen some great videos behind the scenes in your workshops and stuff like yes, that. Look, yeah. Looks great. How? How involved are you from a? Um, so I appreciate Daz and the guys like yeah. from a technical perspective, but how involved in terms of actually running the team from a business perspective? Are you sort of front mm. and centre, heading up that? Or? Oh, yes. Yeah. So first year. That was um, a very, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no one's allowed <laughs> in there. Next question. <laughs> first year, um, before the season started, I was up in a workshop and I'll tell the boys, right, you need to test me on the bike. I need to know exactly which part is what. What's the chassis? Oh, wow. What's the swing arm? What's the forks? All that sort of thing. I say, you need to test me. So they did. Every time I go up there, they'd be like, what's that? I'd be like, oh, there's a forks? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I want to make sure that I come into the paddock, to the championship, knowing what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I felt like through these two past years, I've learned so much about the bikes, how it's put together. Um, tire choices of the riders, um, engine braking, all that sort of thing. You know, I'm starting to understand it yeah. a bit more. And, you know, when you're starting to understand things, you mm. enjoy it a bit mm. more and you feel like you're more involved with it. But otherwise, I mean, I'm very hands on. I like to kind of know what's going, what's going on. on yeah. But I have to say, I have a great team. Um, you know, everyone works really well together. Mm. Um, and I'm just really glad that, you know, I have a really good bunch of people yeah. to make this happen. I, t I tell you, I've got it now that yeah, you've uh, openly bloody F nine hundreds blaring <laughs> in the background there. Now. Um, no, but now that you you know you've said in your own words that you're getting you're getting more established within yourself. You know, you think I know a lot more, and I can see the changes and what changes I want to make. But because Smith's racing started with the BMW element, yeah. But you are now the you are the factory BMW. Yeah, we team are now. the factory team. Yeah, this year. Have you ever thought about changing, changing flavour, changing, <laughs> changing brand? Um, well, that's the name, Grace. Changing yeah. flavour. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I mean, like last year, I did speak to a few manufacturers. Um, right. And because I thought, well, let me just 
let me just have another, you know, let me see what other choices are there and yeah. kind of just have a um, um, bit of an open mind to see what options are mm-hmm. there. So I have spoke to different manufacturers and a lot of them would love to have me on board. Yeah. But for me, um, the reason why I stuck with BMW is because I felt like there's unfinished business for me. It's easy to say, oh, that manufacturer doesn't work. I'm just going to go and switch to a manufacturer that's in the top end of the championship. It's mm. easy to do that, but then you kind of haven't finished with this one. So yeah. I feel like saying, well, no, I want to stick with BM and I want to make sure that I get that bike on the top end of the championship. So that's why I'm with BMW. And how, no, 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 it's, it's, that's, it's, it's always a good yeah. question because at the end, you know what I find interesting is people always go about, you know, the, the privateer element and, Unfortunately, you were a private now that you're factory backed, you know. Yeah. But leading up to that point, you're you're a sole team owner. You were a privateer up yeah. to that point, yeah, and, that's true. and it gives you that choice to go down yeah. any route on that. You yeah, know, that's uh, true. Yeah. Just with the Ducati connection, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, there was a Ducati love yeah. there. Would you? Not well, but I mean, I, I have to say, you know, I mean, I'm really honoured that BM asked me to do that to be their factory team this yeah. year, and being so new in the paddock um it's uh, it's really i'm really happy to kind of be there be the factory team and you know this season i'm sure the boys will be on it so we'll just get some results going and what, go go no, go go for it josh go for it go without for it. sort of saying too much what's your um work and relationship like with the world team with with SMR in the World Championship, is there a link there or not, or is it separate entirely? Or um, I th- we try to have a bit of a dialogue. Um, mm-hmm. I think Darren um, is the man you need to ask about yeah. that. But um, he's outside with his ear to the he? door, <laughs> listening to this. Yeah, yeah. Do we'll not see this. <laughs> um, but wild. yes, I mean, so far, you know, we are communicating, so that's a good sign. Yeah, yeah. I think because people, you know. W- People assume that um, being the factory... Oh, hang on, how do I rephrase this? <laughs> I think people assume being the factory effort in BSB is like a ticket to to like, oh, the factory just give you all these... It's actually no, not really like that. No. It, it still requires a huge amount of effort, doesn't it? And, oh, yeah. And I suppose does, that's yeah. the dynamic of the championship that we're in, and yeah. this is a good thing for it. But also then people from the outside kind of look and think, oh, it's like a golden ticket yeah. sort of thing, but it's, it's no, not that straightforward, is it? No, it's not that straightforward. I mean, a lot of the parts, I still have to basically buy it. So, yeah. um, And also because it's a new bike, it's just taking a bit longer to get everything kind of like you know, come through, but yeah. mm. we've done quite well, actually. So I'm pretty happy. They look great. I love the new style fair and looks like a MotoGP bike. It does. Looks yeah, great, everyone says it? that. Yeah. I, I've got 100% of a confession on this, right? Yeah. When I first saw that new BMW in flesh, I thought that is the most stunning thing. And then sometimes you get a bad angle on a camera. <sighs> You know what I mean? And it, it looks a bit it looks fat, totally, isn't it? Yeah, it does look a bit... I don't understand You have the that. wings, right? Aye, but it's because like, of the scoop <laughs> element. You're like, you look at it and go... That doesn't look the same what I saw. And it's, no, you know, that's my opinion. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's, and then you look it up close and go, that is a work of art. Yeah. And it's just the odd little. Yeah. I think, I think now you're going to, you're probably going to get this episode deleted. But you know, like the fact, you know, the testing colors, you know, yes. you're like very, very, very plain, you know, and very minimal. I thought, that doesn't look better. You know, yeah. until you put the graphics but, yes, on, it transformed it, it again. Does, yeah. Totally yeah. transformed it again. Yeah. I, I tell you, I've got another. Well, that's what the point of a podcast is. You ask millions of questions. So, was BSB always an ambition for you? Because you started off watching the Macau Grand Prix, which is a road event. Yes, it is. So, I grew up in Macau. So, Macau Grand Prix was like at my doorstep. So, I used to go when I was little. Um, And obviously, Grandfather's Company was the title sponsor for many years, SJM. So we title sponsor the whole thing. Hmm. So I used to go down there and watch the races. When I was little, my grandfather's sister has a house on the track. So we used to go up there and we used to lean over the the barrier and Uh, watch the races. Uh, it's, up Boy, by the uni- yeah, it's up by the university. I mean, yeah, don't quote me on all the corners. I'm not very good at it, but it's near the <laughs> that university. Was yeah. That was a curveball, that, was a that one, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Um, Lisboa, just shout Lisboa. It doesn't matter what question it is. <laughs> no, it's, it's up on the mountain. Ah, right. It's up on the mountain. So that's why there's a university is around there. 
I, I, like that would be the best because when you go up like a uh, San Francisco hill oh yeah it's just like the thing is when like everything on telly it looks flat you know but when if you when you go to Macau it's like you come down Lisboa turn right and I kid you not it just goes yeah it just yeah. goes like that I'm just that. laughing at the thought of you trying to explain this lap after that bottle of grey goose <laughs> <laughs> like, should oh, get no. him to do that next <laughs> Just if you bring him in, then do the podcast. I've been on drinking with Dom. I can't afford to go drinking with him anymore. The bot, mate, He's the bot, than I am. From the bottom of the studio, this bottle was like that, and yes, like Derek yeah. Shields was running around. Now there's now there, that, <laughs> that, that that's was a different meant, pod. <laughs> that's a different pod altogether. Well, but I it, think my party was mentioned in one of the BSV races. I can't remember who brought it up. But I think someone all, did. I think them parties are mentioned worldwide. <laughs> to be fair, it's about like you're just getting handed round drinks and that. But, but it's, I mean, you came to 2018 and 19. So I started the parties like 2009, 10, 11, when I used to live there. Um, and you'll find this quite funny. So I think it was 2011. So obviously, besides the bike racing and Macau Grand Prix, you got the cars too, mm. Formula 3. Um, so it was in my uh, auntie's casino, the MGM. And there's a bar called the Lions Bar. And it's basically right in the middle of the casino floor. And I always corner the front for all the bikers <laughs> where the band is. So they corner all the front area for only the bikers allowed in. The car drivers have to stand in the back. Class. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I can't, I think it must be like, like it yeah, so it was a Saturday night and some <laughs> car driver i don't even know who he is but came up to me and goes you're Faye, aren't you i'm like yes he goes do you like formula three? Oh no he goes my name is so and so i drive formula three do you like formula three and i looked at him go nah i like the bikes <laughs> <laughs> good on you good on you oh. I, I t- so like um growing up watching the macau and then uh, then you've been over here then the tt and then obviously the british element yeah. but you <laughs> With Hickman, you won the Macau, and obviously, yeah. you know, Michael won a, a lot of t- Macau, uh, yeah. a lot of Macau Grand Prix and stuff. So, was that like a, a trigger system for you to go? Well, I've won that now. Like, what's ne- What was next? It was it always well, like between two thousand and six to two thousand eleven. I thought Macau Grand Prix was the only track in the world. I didn't know there was other races. Yeah. Wow. Until I came here to the UK, and obviously eighteen. Um, when I start coming to BSB with Michael, I start understanding, oh my God, there's so many tracks. <laughs> and then there's the road racing, the Northwest and the TT, and I was like fascinated with it. So um, I guess that's where the bug started and go, well, you know what, this is fun. And people are so nice. It's unbelievable how nice people are here. So um, I think you just kind of, you know, I just want to be part of it. <sighs> What's better than BSB or Roads? Oh. <laughs> that, that's that, gonna... that... <laughs> and we're not editing this out. This is, <laughs> this is, this is fun. I've Go got another it. one to lead on. I don't, <laughs> this is good. This. Go on. You know what that one's going to be. You can't laugh through this one, Fear. You're going to have yeah. to answer. I know. Um, um, <laughs> which one's better? Um, right. It's a tough one, this one. <laughs> I could say road racing is more exciting um, mm. in a way. It's more thrilling. Um, and because it's so close to Macau Grand Prix, I can relate to it. Yes. BSB um, is more kind of different like circuit racing. Um, so you kind of get the experience of going to different circuits and, and more kind of, you know, um, how do I put it? It's... Shorter racing, mm. in a way, you know, yeah. um, you kind of do uh, the track um, certain amount of laps, but then the TT is basically a 36 miles in like four laps, which takes forever. Yeah. So <laughs> it, is a, it is a totally different spectacle, isn't it? And I think yeah. that you've never been the watch, have you? Oh, don't get onto that now. No, 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 <laughs> but no, no, no. But the thing is, no, because obviously we, you know, yeah, we've been there all the I'm time, and been. it's like, but like, yeah. better, like Hickman's going around just sub seventeen, you know, like seventeen. I'm doing seventeen minutes summit, and you think my dear mother's got to hold her breath for seventeen minutes. You think she's going to be a cracking scuba diver? <laughs> yeah. you know I mean, that's to- <laughs> totally different. And what sub fifty second lap round here, like yeah. boom, boom. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. a massive fan of road racing. Never been to the TT because 
well just mm. when you're racing yourself and stuff you need two weeks yeah. off like so trying to get there <laughs> you need you need that time don't you so i've never been able to get over but would like to try and go this year yeah you should yeah. and um but i guess the when people say this all the time don't they you get some people who are very roads biased some people who are very mm. short circuit bias but i think now more than ever there's such a mix so mm. there's some like top like your guys top level short circuit racers back doing the roads and that used to be the case with like foggy and hizzy yeah, back in the day and i yeah. think that's great to see and um and i think it's clearer that it's two very different things now mm. that divides a little bit different isn't it yeah no i'd yeah. agree i would agree with that i would agree with that but so I'd say we're sit, we're sitting. Hang on, before we go, we've got world superbikes of ASB. <laughs> no, that, that, wait, funny enough, mate, we're on the same page on that. Yeah. It's a bit like, because you know what, I, like, um, I, you might have heard or might not have heard, but I started a rumour about you ages ago that you were going to buy the Ulster Grand Prix out because to get Hickman to go beat the lap record again. Ah, I was right. hoping that was going to get a bit of traction. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't quite pan nah. out. <laughs> but, um, well, actually, recently, what they put out that I was going to ride the F900 this weekend, I know I've been you know, waiting. For, I've I got a story get, about this. I, I still get you. someone come up to me and goes, I thought you were riding this oh. weekend. I was looking on the timing, but I don't see your name. I'm like, it was <laughs> you know April Fool's. <laughs> we, were, we were racing last weekend at Croft and at, a club, at a club race. And my poor dad came. He stayed at Hope. It was only 45 minutes from our house. And he drove up and he comes straight in. He's like, have you seen that fair horse riding one of them F900s? I was like, Dad. Are you? And he was just dead serious. And I thought, What? <laughs> I went, yeah, Dom's riding for McCann's as well. Oh, yeah, that did not go down yeah. well. He, was know, honestly, that, he just thought he was in telling everybody in there, and everyone's just laughing at him like, you just didn't have a clue. By, by the way, the McCann's thing was 100% grace. I'm not a grass, but that is 100% grace. Now, it, it, that went down. It was a good laugh. It was a good laugh. But now, touching on the world's element that you talked about, is yeah. is that the next chapter? That, that's, that's where I was going with that rumour that- element because... Off well, season's great because everyone's yeah. going. Oh, she's going to Worlds. She's going to Worlds. You know what? what where well, are you I at? can say that this year we're going to still doing two wild cards in World. Oh, which, which which ones? So we're definitely going to be doing the Donington yeah. one. Yeah. Um, but the next one, I'm kind of still debating. Um, so we're nice and hot. Well, there's one that they quite like to do. I think is Imola. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I forgot that's back this year, isn't it? Yeah, I think they put that back on the um, yeah. on the map. So, but um, I mean, obviously, a lot of people ask me, "Hey, are you going to do world?" Yeah. I mean, I even had someone ask me, are "You going to do MotoGP?" I'm like, "Well, you don't have any space in there." <laughs> yeah. No thanks. <laughs> but, um, but I mean, for me, I like to kind of um, do something well, have a bit of success here mm-hmm. before I start thinking of going somewhere else. So yeah. I felt like, you know, I've only been in BSB for, this is my third year um, racing. Um, so I want to kind of get more experience too mm. and kind of work my way up in a way. So is that, is that, is that the dream? Like, you know, it's like you always set a goal, like you were yeah. saying, set a goal, achieve the goal, move yeah. on. So what, what is the, the end end goal for Feho as far as Ooh, racing is um, concerned. That's a hard one to answer yeah, in racing because no, no, there's but, lots of things to take. The thing is, everyone in this paddock, if you could point someone in the face, go, what do you want to be? I, I'd yeah. like to be Marquez. You know, like uh, because it is the top top, isn't yeah. it? You know what I mean? It's like yeah. as far as like domestic domestic race series, you can't get any higher than BSB. Yeah. That is fact. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then that next stage up is worlds. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, it's true. Yeah. It is it's and may that be like not particularly rider capability. I mm. fully believe that it's about budget bikes mm. and that support element oh, has yes. to be stronger. And then exactly. yet again, to go to MotoGP, you need yeah. even more it's support true. on that yeah. to do it. But like, I think when I came into BSB, the way how I saw things was very different mm. to other teams. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew that I need to be more engaged with the fans. So... I'm very open, you know, anybody can come and talk to me, anybody can stop me for a picture or anything. And Well, we did drag you on to here, so yeah, fair, fair play. If, that doesn't, if that doesn't see everything, I don't know what yeah. does. I... Um, but yeah, it's just I had a different way of thinking in a way, so I think mm. that's why people relate to me. Um, uh, well, I hope you don't mind me asking this question, but you're one of, if not the only team in BSB left that's essentially running without a big title sponsor other than other than yourself and is 
I mean this and then like I hope this is coming out right <laughs> but the, it's yeah there used to be a lot of that there's there's a lot less of it now obviously expense and stuff is that something that you in the future that you would look to do work with like a commercial partner or such yeah or? of course you know I think um, because the team is only this is our third year um, so I'm actually constantly building the brand up mm-hmm. Epic Show Racing um, and obviously, you know, with the girls coming on board and helping them out, um, giving them a bit of a platform to kind of like uh, be seen more and to get sponsorship come in. Um, that's kind of my goal, how yeah. I want to be, uh, to build a brand. Um, and I, you, you never know. I mean, eventually, you know, I want people to see um, what Effectual Racing is about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're here to support female in motorsport and kind of have a voice to say that, you know, anybody can do anything if you set your mind to it. It doesn't matter what gender you are, what race. Um, if you want to do it, go and do it. And, um, you know, and just like the girls, you know, they're, they're determined to go out and race. Yeah. How many females do you have ringing you, emailing you to get on the grid at BSB? Emailing me. Yeah, like, you know, getting in contact to get onto the grid, you know, that support element. You know, is there, is there, is there enough women trying to get in the sport, in your opinion? Um, yeah, there is. I mean, like, Kate, Kate Walker, mm-hmm. um, I spoke to her last last year yeah. um, or the year before, I can't remember, beginning of last year. And she wanted to come into BSB. So this year we managed to actually bring her in and do the F900 yeah. class, um, which is really good because yeah. she's the only female in that whole class. She is as well, isn't she? Yeah, she is, yeah. so I think it's great that he's involved in that class and I caused a shitstorm online <laughs> defending that. And started it. Even Daz was commenting on it. And do you know when you just start something, you think, I wish I hadn't bothered. But I think obviously a lot of people are talking about Richard being involved, but mm. my understanding is that he's involved to bring on the, exactly. the girls as much as anything. Yeah. Not the whole yeah. class, to be honest. Yeah. Well, yeah, Dom yeah. needs a bit of hand. <laughs> he's, a bit of, he's, a, he's a mentor for Kate, um, mm-hmm. and I think it'll really help her to kind of it pull will, her yeah. up um, too. So um, I'm glad to have Richard on board um, because he is a kind of experienced rider. So yeah, must, he'll yeah. pass on a lot of experience to Kate, which is good. Hmm. Yeah. Like, um, as far as people, you know, what, like getting more female in on the grids, you know, yeah. that's that's spread out throughout the grids. Is that is that a very open thing for you to like get in contact? You know, people listen to this going, well, let's give fit. Oh, steady on that setup. <laughs> Nearly spilling it all over the place. But is that like an open? Like, like, listen dump, to this. Been a oh no, I wouldn't. I would have knocked it over if it was a pint. <laughs> no, but like, um, people listen to this. You know, is that. Is that essentially an open invitation to get in touch with you and try and work something out? Oh, or? I have like I have girls trying uh, getting in touch with me, even brilliant, like girls brilliant. in oh, you know, in those little um, very mini, young mini. girls in those young classes. Yeah, yeah. the mini bike classes. The mini bike mini, race, yeah, right. exactly. So, um, I think you know, before I brought the girls on, I knew they were riding. But they weren't kind of like no one kind of pay attention. No. Mm. So I think since I kind of bought them under the Epic Show banner, people started to pay no like yeah. attention yeah. to them, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad. I mean, 2021, I started off with um, three girls. Then they went to four. <laughs> and then now this year went up to five. So. You know, it's slowly building. I yeah. don't want to jump in there and say, "Oh, I'm helping twenty or thirty girls." That's that's yeah. what I'm thinking. That all like that that yeah. female grid in be yeah. would be a very difficult. It will be. So I want to slowly kind of bring them on and kind of mm. basically put a lot of effort into each one of them yeah. and kind of guide them along yeah. and give them that kind of like support they need. Yeah, there's more than just right. I think people forget this, don't they? I think you summed it up really well there. Your program does give them a profile and something to sort of to stand on but they've then got to go and do the work and i guess when you when you're looking at uh at people to be part of that mm-hmm. you're obviously looking at more than i'm assuming just the riding yeah yeah i suppose how to talk to people and, and exactly. press and all of that stuff is a huge part of it that we don't really talk about yeah a lot, that's true but... yeah so when you so when people are when you do talk to people do, what do you look at things like that the person as opposed to just their riding capability and stuff well, you know, I think um, a lot of the time, uh, well, um, for me, being a team owner or a team, you know, team boss, 
Do you prefer that type of boss? Well, just everyone comes in in the morning, boss, you know, yeah. like, damn oh, yeah, right. they do, yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping they do. Lead from the front, lead from the front. Yeah. <laughs> Neil. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm not one of those, like, just go in and go, hey, why are you not riding properly? What's wrong with you? No, I don't do that. <laughs> so um, I want to try and understand where the problem is and yeah. trying to kind of talk into it to see where where the issue is and try and correct it and try and give them the support and if they need a bit of help. Like, for example, I think last year, Scarlett had a bit of a wobble and she just needed someone to give her a hug yeah. and just kind of give her that encouragement to go mm-hmm. back out and race. And I think... Because I'm a female, it kind of I give that kind of I can give that relate to that and kind of give that comfort to them, and they feel more engaged with it mm. in a way. Yeah. Well, that hug definitely worked, didn't she? Podium or win the three hundred race? Is that like? No, that's Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah, Scarlett. Is Sorry, there. close. Now, now hold on, I can't get told <laughs> off too much of that one. I do apologise. There you are. It's this... Sorry, I'm just conscious of the time and. Oh, don't, don't don't worry about that. We're having a great time. Don't worry about that. Got... That's why we don't have any clocks in here, Josh. Like it's like uh, Bex will be the... braying down the door at any minute now. But don't you? Worry. There's a question that I, I've been so when I mentioned that we were doing this, so many people asked the same question. Right. And I don't know why I've never asked it before. It's not necessarily specific to you, but the question was, if you could sign any rider nice. yeah. from the past, alive, dead, whatever you know, here, whatever, from any era, any year. Uh, well, who would it be? Two. You can have two. Oh, I can have two. From any paddock. Like, any discipline. Like, oh, I like this. That's a good question. I've tried to think about this. And who did you nick that off? Oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> my boss. <laughs> oh, there <laughs> we are. <laughs> wow. Um... You automatically want to go Rossi, just, but you can't do no. that. No. I always uh, think that pays my go- yeah, go to. He'll be a bit, like, difficult to get really um, <laughs> oh no you can do no no oh no this is you, fantasy land this oh, it would be anybody. Anybody. Yeah. i anyone. have i have met rossi um 2010 i was quite yeah was, what was he like it was nice yeah yeah have you ever met someone who'd been disappointed that you've met them you know what i mean like yeah, oh, Tom, I Tom love, wait, come on i'm always a disappointment <laughs> ask me mother right <laughs> No, no, but no, hold on. no. But you know what I mean, though. Have you? Yeah. Met, oh, I'd love to meet them. What a lovely person they are. And they tell you, and you meet them, guy. What a grump. You know, <laughs> no, you know, you know what I mean, though. Uh, yes, I have actually. Mariah Carey. Really? Yeah. Was she just a grumpy cowboy? Yep. <laughs> I won't say that, but she was not very friendly. Let's say. really. Yeah. All I want for Christmas is yeah, a new attitude. Is that the crack? <laughs> yeah. That was very good, Tom. Um, but yeah, going back to the, yeah, sorry, the main yes. question. Sorry, sorry, the, sorry. Um, 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 riders who I like to have. Mm. Um, that'd be a quite a tough one because I don't really know a lot of them. I suppose that's a fair yeah, point because right? of how you've come into race mm. and stuff like that, yeah? Yeah, I came in not too far. I like Stuart Easton. It's funny you say that. Really? Well, yeah, it, he was lap, my, Macau lap record. Rap boy. Yeah. yeah. Rap boy. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's his nickname, right? No, like, that's, okay, speaking, speaking of nicknames, he'll be loving I say this, right? Like, um, his son's race motocross at like right. school boy level, and he races yeah. against our like fat like the. We've got we've got a little family on chasing and race and right. part of that family is a bloke called Sugar Tits. <laughs> Swear me life, right? And his son, right, is like okay. eighty five British champion and them them two, Sugar Sugar and Easton are like best mates and they both listen to the pod. So the fact that you said that, <laughs> they're like, get in. It's, it's funny that you say that because when I was thinking about what my answer to that question would be, I thought about Stuart Easton because when I was younger before I raced the BSB. He's the oldest, youngest man that lives by the way. He's only twenty three oh, or right. something like no. that. He is man. <laughs> Get, don't be saying that. <laughs> um, I, he was just a legend. I just loved him. He was the first like British superbike rider that I used to fo- like really follow. Knowing you were a yeah. kid racing and you you going through the ranks sort of thing. Yeah. I don't know why, but I just always I would always remember going to Croft and getting I'd get a, um, a Stuart Easton poster yeah. like. So. Yeah. Oh, he's wrecking the place. He's wrecking the place. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, it's just my laptop. No, I tell you what. Um, we're going to have to like tidy up because you've, you've actually got plans. God love you for yeah, another I dirty podcast. I know. Betrayer, another dirty betrayer. Podcast. But, um, it's all right. We got in first. It's fine. We yeah. did. <laughs> but um, 
obviously a few of the questions already been answered like Steve yeah. Nutt, he was asking about the switch to Ducati like I think people oh, give the people what they want yeah. fair. give the people yeah. what they want you never know that <laughs> might still happen we don't know I'm not saying too much but I mean oh I like it I yeah. like it uh, who else we got who else we got um, da, 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 da. <sighs> Craig Lowe this is brilliant what has been the best and worst decision you've made as a team owner worse and Best. Worst and best decision. Yeah. Oh wow! Well, oh, that is good. That <laughs> that is a, that is, a that good is deep. That, that is deep. That I like that. Okay, best decision I'll say, having Josh Brooks this year. Really? I wanted him last year too. So yeah, I'm really chuffed that he's come on board. Oh, yeah. brilliant! What's yeah. your worst decision been? Oh, <laughs> could be anything. This <laughs> absolutely anyone. <laughs> Worst decision. Wow. Ooh. Mm-hmm. It's quite good that you have to think about yeah, that. No, yeah, I know. That's, that's, nice. yeah, that's actually yeah. a very valid point, that. A very um, valid point. There's been no massive standout sort of things over think, the three years. There. I think losing my temper last year when we ran out of gas in one of the races. Right. I literally no, I went... War- I think that's warranted. Oh, really? Yeah. I literally <laughs> went next door that. and start yelling. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so. give you uh, da, 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 da. No, I think to be honest, I think we've uh, fairly, fairly gone for all done. Here we go. You just fill in with another question while <laughs> I read through Luke's here. This is actually a difficult one. That so, <laughs> um, oh. what is the aim for this year's TT lap time wise? Oh, I see that oh, question about the oh, that's some yeah. Luke. That that is deep. <laughs> Would you like Hickman to go faster or just keep winning? Um, oh, that is a hard oh is that a question? That is a question from oh, Luke. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, I think he is holding the um, lap time at the moment. Yeah. 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 But I would like him to hold a lap time on my bike. I uh, the bet. Of course, it was, was on the Smith's bike, wasn't yes, it? Yes. Yeah. So, so you laughed at me. There's the answer then, kids. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go faster. Solve yeah. the position. Just go yeah. faster. Yeah. My God. So, like... Come, sorry, I was what? going to ask a slightly yeah. different question. Come, no, oh, no, wait, no I'm just, so what you got planned for the rest? Of, so you're doing the northwest, yes, and then um, what TT Ma- TT and is Ma- yeah Macau? Oh, yeah. Wait, what is actually up with Macau? Because last year, I people think, were, people weren't there because no, it was the yeah, lockdown situation, yeah, exactly. wasn't it? So, no one was like ready to go back there and sit in the hotel for seven yeah. days. So no. we just said no, we're not going to do it. But I think this year we will because I was home in February. And I'm actually going home again next week. So it's open, Macau. So right, No quarantine situation no, at no. all? All oh, right. So, so it's all news. open now. So I'm sure we'll go back there. Have you, would you like to get a bit more involved with the bike side in Macau? Or is that nothing really an interest for you? In what way? Uh, like the organisation, you know, make it maybe a two race event. You know, like, would you like to um, make a few more changes potentially? Or? I mean... I think this year, going back with my own team, mm. it will make a bit of a noise. So maybe from Definitely. there, um, you know, they might actually, um, I can, I mean, I can't say I have influence in how they actually mm. organize their race, um, yeah, but... you know, um, decisions. But um, I do know people that work in Macau Grand Prix. So we just have to see how it kind of plans out. But. I think I'm just really happy that I'm going back yeah. this year with my team. Where That'll be the my... first time you've done that then. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because I've been doing sponsorship, you know, of different teams for so many years. To actually go happy back there home. with my team, I think it's going to be mega. Has Josh done Macau? He's done the Northwest. No. He's done TT. Does he want it? But I don't think he does. <laughs> but but I have somebody on uh, in my radar, and it will be. Quite interesting for Macau this oh, year. She has mentioned I Easton think... three times already, so I'm hoping it. Like Easton, if you're I'll watching this, I'll give Stuart this, a call. I'll I'm give gonna, you sugar. I'll give you sugar's a, number. You can ring him. You'll get him. I'm gonna have a quid on that J- John McGuinness. Oh, so God. put your you put your quid in. No, he's Honda. He's Honda. He's Honda. He's Honda. That was a rubbish, rubbish guess. That was. <laughs> oh, who could it be? Anyway, we'll you're not going to tell us anyway. You're no, not gonna I'm tell not going to say. Aye. No, I'm not going to say. There we go. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm looking at Grace in the side eye here. Is there anything anything else? A house, ah, a housekeeping. Yeah, oh, no, housekeeping. We've got the housekeeping element, but I'm trying, I'll quickly go through the, right. the lessons on that. 
we could, honestly we could we could sit here for another there's so many more questions really? that we want to go wow. through but on that but we are fully aware that you're going to leave us and go to a not as good podcast no, um, this... was... <laughs> but um obviously... I like this one Oh, I'll Br- come back anytime. They are Grace. You call. Yeah, there you they, they are. That, that is one hundred percent Grace. After, after Macau, hopefully, and then yes, we can, yeah. we can chat about that. Yeah. Before yeah. Macau, we can give us oh, the even name after drop. The- the road or after yeah, like northwest yeah, brilliant, tt yeah. or something yeah. sorted you just want to go to the nightclub you that's what you're trying to get after there <laughs> oh no i can't do nightclubs anymore class but obviously thank you so much but um as oh, far no, as housekeeping you. we've got to do I, I tell you what actually from a bennett's point of view we've done that pitch perch so me and grace have been down there that's actually mint and the only way you can actually do that is having a bennett's policy right so you go over flash a badge like you flash your policy yeah and you'll get free coffees get to hang around with everyone like hang around with the trophies you're actually on pit wall you get to walk everywhere and all right and cool. like bennett's are massively pushing the boat out being the yeah. official title sponsor of bsb they're yeah. opening up the doors to let more people see behind yeah. the scenes on that yeah. side of things which is great and um, as far as the patrons go thank you so much for all the questions oh, like, thank you like we say we could have sat here <laughs> and reeled through that many more yes and um yeah of global moto they've been with us for well the, started off with chrissy i mentioned every episode yes. but personally sponsored chrissy for years and they continue to support the pod and keep us going so click okay. by the deliver and uh, yes. get yourself on that thank yeah. you so much and josh just keep looking gorgeous mate you know what i mean get <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the eye candy for the show and then um, but no this is a radio show it is mate but it's youtube <laughs> don't really, obviously like and subscribe they are i think that is all the housekeeping we've got but Faye, yet again thank you so much for your time oh, and thank uh, you, good luck for the season Oh, thank you. for the season. Yeah. So, there yeah, we go. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> Chasing the Racing, powered by Colchester Kawasaki, part of the Global Moto Group. We supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt, and Benelli motorcycles.